Hey everyone, Chase Ellaby and Joel Williams over here at Williams Ellaby coming to you today with the age old question that everyone asks themselves at some point in their life, should I hire a lawyer? What's the answer to that question? The unbiased answer. <laughs> We are lawyers, so it's obviously biased. <laughs> right, there's, but, a, there's a tinge of bias. Yeah, but in all honesty, the answer, at least in most situations, is almost always yes. If you think you might need a lawyer, you probably do. That's right. Um, whether it's a criminal case, whether it's a civil case, whether it's a divorce, whether it's a, golly, speaking of divorce, like, I don't know how many times, I guess we're at the age where people are getting divorced a lot. <laughs> I don't know how many times people come and, to me and say, oh. Oh, yeah, it's going to be fine. We're going to agree on everything. Yeah. And then three weeks later, they're arguing over who gets grandma's china plates. Right, right. exactly. Um, so the answer is almost always yes. Um, but just because you meet with a lawyer doesn't mean you have to hire that lawyer. Right. And I think that's an important distinction is it's almost always important to at least get direction from an attorney. And then you can make the decision whether you want to hire that attorney after you have that initial meeting. Yeah, and I think I've said it many times before in prior videos. It's always, at a minimum, I think it's important just to talk to a lawyer, just to get some advice on you know what may or may not be useful or something you need to consider when determining whether or not to hire a lawyer. So let's kind of dive in. What do you think the first thing you would need to consider would be if you're trying to mull over whether or not you want to hire a lawyer? Uh, whether it's going to be cost effective. Right. Um, so. And we do personal injury, so I'm just going to dive right into that. Um, if you have a thousand dollars of damages, you probably don't need to hire a lawyer. Right. Um, the insurance company is probably going to pay you that. If you've got a million dollars in damages, well, they're going to fight you. Even if you got the best case in the world, they're probably going to fight you over that million dollars. They don't. They fight harder over more money than they do less money, because mm -hmm. uh, insurance companies, believe it or not don't like writing big checks. Yeah. Um, and so you may need a lawyer on your side to to fight for that uh, if the damage is warranted. Right, exactly. I think, in, I mean, in no cases, you know, we use the term like big, big case, small case, but it's all kind of reverse um, just by nature of what we do. But you know, for the smaller cases, smaller damages, yeah, it definitely becomes kind of sort of a cost benefit analysis, right? Because most personal injury lawyers are contingency based, right? So we get a percentage of whatever the gross settlement is. You have to kind of you know think in your head or do the math. Okay, if my bills are you know two thousand dollars, I have to pay X in attorneys' fees and all that. You know, is this is this something that's going to be cost effective uh, for me? So that's definitely the first thing to consider. I'd say the second thing to consider uh, would be what you know what type of insurance company are you dealing with, or which insurance company are you dealing with? Now, for Georgia, and this might be the same all over the country. I haven't done a poll, but there's definitely the good insurance companies, good meaning easier to deal with, aren't going to jerk you around, and there's certainly the insurance companies that are just God awful, mm -hmm. right? Just terrible insurance companies are going to jerk you around. They're not going to respond. They're going to delay. They're going to do everything they can to drag their feet. So that's definitely something to consider because a lot of times we get a lot of cases where people try to handle it on, you know, by themselves for six, seven months and the insurance company just completely ignores them, doesn't call them back, is jerking them around on their property damage claim, are making just real unreasonable, just ridiculous offers, which you know, it's good for us because then they end up calling us and it turns out, you know, most more times than not, it's a good case. Um, but it's bad for people wanting to handle things on their own because it's just really just a brick wall that they run into and they have no hammer, right? Our hammers, we can always file a lawsuit and go to court and have a jury decide. If you're a pro se person, um, you don't have that hammer. I mean, you could learn and try to figure out how to file a lawsuit and, you know, go through that whole process. I would highly recommend not doing that. Um, but insurance companies know that when they're dealing with pro se people. So they want to take advantage of that situation. So whether or not you have a good or a bad insurance company can really make a big difference because I've had plenty of situations where people have come to me, Hey, the insurance company's offering me X. I've got, you know, Y in damages. What do you think? Like, well, you know, that's not terrible. You know, I could probably get you more, but it's not worth hiring me for it because I got to take a fee and you're probably going to, you know, it's going to put you in the same, <clears throat> excuse me, in the same place that you are before. And I've also had, you know, people come to me and said insurance companies offered me, you know, X and I'm like, that's laughable how, <laughs> you know, insulting that is. Um, and, you know, so that's, that makes a big difference for sure. Yeah. And sometimes it comes down to what adjuster you're dealing with yeah. within the insurance company. Some are good, some are bad. So. Yeah. Uh, another thing to consider, I think, when you're trying to decide whether to hire a lawyer is just how complex the case mm -hmm. is, right? If it's a 
med medical malpractice case, if it's a products liability case, if it's anything that's going to involve expert witnesses, if it's going to involve a bunch of depositions and testimony, and a lot of different evidence needs to come in to prove your case, like just bite the bullet and hire a lawyer at that point. Yeah. Um, however, if you have a very simple case where you've got a dash cam in your car and you're driving towards a green light and it captures somebody else coming right into your lane and hitting you and your damages aren't, you, luckily you're not hurt that bad, you maybe got a grand or two in damages, that's probably one of those cases worth trying to handle on your own. Mm -hmm. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Um, Sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't, but in those situations, maybe it is worth trying to do it on your own. Yeah. Um, I would say another thing to consider is going to be the time that it usually takes to pursue a case or a claim. That's probably, you know, one of the top three questions we always get is, okay, how long is this going to take, right? If you are fine to kind of let the, you know, let your claim play out, whether or not, you know, continue to get the treatment that you need, make sure you have time to gather all the documents and things like that. And if you have the time to handle it yourself pro se, you know, if you don't have a job or kids or anything like that, then, you know, it's, I've seen people try to do it because honestly, for, you know, lack of a better term, they've got nothing better to do. Like I've got the time to handle my own claim. But if you don't have the time to handle your own claim, if you don't have the time to get the documents, get the evidence, um, that's definitely something to consider when determining whether or not it's going to be in your interest to hire a lawyer. And sort of in the same vein, I'm going to kind of merge another point, is your risk tolerance. I guess it's probably the next point. Mm -hmm. Is your risk tolerance um, when it comes to pursuing a case, right? Because a lot of times people, and the insurance companies do this because they can get away with it. Because people, quite frankly, their risk tolerance is really low. They think they're getting an okay deal and they'd rather just be done with it, right? And by this, I mean, I've had cases where somebody will call me up and say, hey, I got a check in the mail already. Wreck happened three days ago. I got a check for $2,000 already. Um, you know, the insurance company wants to give that to me and they'll say, you know, they say they'll pay my medical bills up to say $5,000. Well, some people might think that that's a good deal. You know what, my risk tolerance is pretty low. Um, I don't want to mess with it. I don't want to fool with it. I'll take the money and I'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And then little do they know, six months later, they're still treating. They end up needing a surgery. I call the insurance company back and say, hey, um, I appreciate that $2,000, but that was only a dent, um, small dent in my bills. I have XYZ going on. The insurance company's going to say, oh, sorry, you didn't read that part of the letter that said this is the most you're ever going to get. And then we might give you a little bit more money for the medical bills that we think are reasonable and necessary. And let me tell you what, every single time, well, I'm not going to say every single time, more times than not, the insurance company will say your medical bills are not reasonable and necessary. Um, so that's something to keep in mind too, because if you have a higher risk tolerance, you know, it's, and I, I shouldn't say higher risk tolerance automatically means hire a lawyer, but if you have a higher risk tolerance and you're okay with letting things play out, then it would be worthwhile to hire a lawyer. Yeah, I think ultimately it's really a, a you have to make the decision that's best for you, right? If, and for example, if I wanted to paint my house, I can do it. Right. I know how to paint. I know how to paint a house. Right. Done it before. Right. Am I going to do it now? No. Right. Not a chance because I know somebody that's a professional painter that can come in and do it for me and I would rather pay them to do it and I'd rather come to our law firm and do my job that I'm really good at. Well, I think I'm really good <laughs> at it. But I would rather come here and practice my profession and earn money that way as opposed to spending all my time painting a house when it would take me two months and I can pay a crew to come in and do it in two days. Right. But that's just me. A lot of people would rather spend the time to paint their own house. Yeah. And that's cool too. I mean, it's, it's really totally up to you. Um, another thing to consider is knowledge of the law, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, that's probably, it, the, that's probably the first thing to consider. <laughs> it is, and I think where people get tripped up sometimes is when they're trying. They think they only really need to know the law once a lawsuit's filed. Right. But that's not true. The most prevalent example that I can think of when you're talking about a pre-suit settlement is, what do I have to pay anybody back out of the money that I get from my settlement? Right. Depending on your state and depending on what laws apply. You may have to pay back medical bills. You may have to pay back hospital liens. You may have to pay back health insurance companies. You may have to pay back Medicare, Medicaid, 
all of those things. And each one of those entities have different rules that apply to them. And they're all going to tell you you have to pay them back. Right. You don't have to pay all of them back. You do have to pay some of them back. Right. Some of That's them. That's Georgia specific too. Some of them you have to pay a certain portion back, right. but not all of it back. So you have to know that because if you take all the money and spend it, and Medicare has paid some of your bills, well, guess what's going to happen if you don't pay Medicare back? You're getting sued right. to get that money. Or if you have a hospital lien that you don't know about, or you think that you don't have to pay it back, and then you don't pay the hospital lien back, then yeah, yeah. you're going to get sued to get that money back. So. Yeah, so it, uh, a lot of it, that's one reason that the answer is almost always yes, because legal issues arise even when you haven't filed a lawsuit yeah. yet. And yeah. they have serious ramifications. So that's not the... I'm not trying to scare you off from trying to handle a claim on your own, but it's definitely something you need to be aware of. And if, if, if we're going to handle a case on our own, we need to make sure that we either have the knowledge of the law applicable to our case, or we need to be willing to learn all of the law that's that would apply to our case. Yeah, exactly. And I think sort of kind of wrap things up, you know, kind of going back to what I said initially, it's always important to talk to a lawyer because if you talk to a good trustworthy, honest lawyer, they're going to give you all the information you need to make the decision that's best for you and whether or not that case is something that they can handle. They think it's beneficial for you to have a lawyer handle for you. So yeah, I think that that's kind of, you know, the overarching point is find a lawyer that will talk to you that's trustworthy, that will give you the best advice. That's right. Yeah. Um, all right. So if this video has been helpful, what they should they do? Uh, they should like, they should subscribe. <laughs> And if they have any questions, comments, queries, concerns, please put them below and we will definitely address them. <laughs> I just want to make sure you knew what to say. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today. We appreciate your time. <laughs>